welcome to the first Eustoria student conference in legal history. I'm going to give you just a few introductory words about the conference and then I'm going to uh, give the word to all our speakers. Just a brief technical note at the very beginning. Uh, everyone's microphones are probably muted by default when you enter. So when it is your turn to speak, please click unmute so we could see what's going on. Well, here. Uh, so I'm very happy to see you all here. It's very nice that we have managed to organize the conference, at least in some way. As most of you probably know, the conference was supposed to be held in March this year, specifically on March 25th, because that's the anniversary of the Serbian Civil Code of 1844. It was 175 years when we started organizing the conference, so we thought it would be a nice date. But then the coronavirus pandemic struck, and of course we postponed the conference for October, hoping that um, the pandemic would be over by then, since unfortunately it is not, we are meeting online now. And uh, well, while this is not as good as meeting in person, and we would like very much to see you all sometime next year in Belgrade with the pandemic gone, it is very good that we have managed to gather this way. So we We'll try to hold the Eustoria conferences every year at the Belgrade Faculty of Law, live preferably, if possible, online if not. Uh, and we hope to promote students' interest in legal history in this way. Uh, without further ado, I am going to give the floor to our first introductory speaker, Professor Zoran Milković, Dean of the Faculty of Law in Belgrade, and also, I might note, a professor of Serbian legal history. Mr. Dean, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nina. Good morning to all. It's a great pleasure to address you this morning. Uh, we are opening the first student conference on legal history. The title of this conference, Law Codes and Women is very intrigant question. And we are expecting your answers. Uh, I'm not happy that conference, this conference will be held online. I hope next time we, we see us in Belgrade. Uh, your contributions will be published. It's very good thing. And what else to say? At the end, I wish you a successful conference. Thank you very much for your intention. Thank you, Professor Milkovic, Mr. Dean. And now I give the word to Professor Milena Poloyat, who is the head of the Department of Legal History at our faculty and also a professor of Roman law. Good morning, everyone. I will first use the opportunity to welcome all my colleagues and studentkinje i studente u duhu naziva ove konferencije, a to je žene i kodifikacije. Now I will turn to English, of course. Uh, I would like to say, first of all, that I am very proud that my younger colleagues from the Department of Legal History uh, have been uh, organized uh, this uh, really big international student conference uh, with the participants uh, from the different countries and universities from almost all over the world. Uh, the position of women in the society and in law, mainly unequal, has always been a very attractive subject for legal historians, and the title of the conference is obviously very attractive. Uh, the papers uh, cover um, codes from uh, ancient cuneiform codes uh, till modern ones, and codes from different historical periods and diff different legal traditions, 
uh, in countries from far east uh, uh, to countries all over Europe. We also have topics which are not exclusively historical, what is also very good. Also, the focus of the papers in the, on the different position of women in private and public law and their different roles, traditional ones as uh, wives, daughters, um, ma uh, mothers, um, also women as hears, um, women in business, even women as soldiers in army. As a professor of Roman law, uh, I'm glad to see that Roman law aspect is not uh, neglected also on this conference. However, there are also other many interesting aspects concerning the position of women in Roman law, for example, a permanent tutelage of women, manus and free marriage dowry, and somewhat bizarre leg legislation of Octavian Augustus for protection of sexual fidelity uh, of uh, women with his Lex Julia de Adulteris. So maybe some inspiration for the next time. Conference online has its advantages, but I uh, can agree with the Dean that I hope uh, to, to see you next time in Belgrade, because Belgrade is really a very beautiful town, full of history. So I really hope that next time we can see each other here in Belgrade at, Bel at our faculty. I wish to all panelists, professors and students very successful conference and I uh, thank again uh, all my colleagues, younger colleagues, especially Nina, uh, for the organization. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Poloyat. And now I give the word to our final opening speaker, Professor Dragica Vujadinovic. She is a professor of gender studies at our faculty, and she is also, as of recently, the head of an Erasmus Plus project, Law Gem, dedicated to the creation of Master Studies Law and Gender, which is also very important to our faculty and to the meet to the subject of this conference. Professor Vojadinovic, just turn on, on your microphone, maybe. Good morning and welcome all. Uh, I want to greet our Dean, Professor Birkovic, and our visiting uh, lecturers, uh, professors from abroad, and also professors of our faculty. However, I especially want to greet and welcome the students uh, especially them, because this is their event. Uh, professors are here to support them and they will get the opportunity to express their talents, affinities, uh, to uh, develop uh, uh, their knowledge and uh, to present uh, the results of their research. It really is something very important. I'm very proud of uh, uh, the Department for Legal History of our faculty, especially of my younger colleague, Nina, because uh, an enormous effort uh, has been uh, invested into this uh, event and into this idea and this, uh, how to say, proposed to, to last for many further years project. And that is student conference devoted to the codification and especially I'm proud of her that she organized this year the conference uh, devoted to the issue of gender equality or gender uh, uh, gender as uh, as given in the legal history and in the contem contemporary times. Uh, as she said, got this opportunity and I'm honored to be the part of this uh, introductory and welcome speeches as the head of the project which the University of Belgrade. 
uh, got the grant for uh, from uh, the European Commission. And that is, as she said, the strategic partnership in higher education for developing uh, the future master study program called Law and Gender. Uh, we got this um, project together with the partners from Lumsa University in Italy, Orebro University in Sweden, uh, Cadiz University uh, Spain and Saarland University Germany. We have, we have already been working from 2019 uh, very diligently on the project and we have been currently in the process of completing the curriculum and syllabi for this master future master program. And Nina and the other colleagues from uh, Comparative Legal Traditions uh, course uh, held at our faculty will take part in uh, they they have been taking part in creating and will take part in conducting the course uh, uh, called gender issue in uh, uh, gender issue in comparative uh, legal uh, history uh, so the the issue of uh, legal history and gender in that legal history uh, has been as uh, my uh, previous uh, colleagues and introductory speakers said uh, is a very relevant and indicative uh, issue indicative for uh, understanding i would add how the law had been created through a very long uh, pre-modern -mod history uh, in accordance with the patriarchal uh, tradition of male dominance and uh, its uh, reproduction uh, only with the modern uh, times and uh, modern law uh, has emerged uh, the idea of universal equality and the idea of, of universal uh, equality has become as the result has how has been the outcome and the result of uh, the political civic political revolutions so in uh, as we all know in the american declaration of independence and the french uh, declaration of un uh, universal rights of man and citizen the idea of universal equality was finally as the civilizational result announced however the long period of time from then from uh, uh, the last part of the 18th century was necessary and the struggle, struggle of women and uh, their male uh, supporters was necessary for uh, how to say uh, the struggle for recognition, uh, the, not only of uh, female uh, and uh, concerned with the gender equality, but uh, many other uh, aspects of discrimination were covered under uh, the abstract notion of universal uh, equality uh, just to say that uh, the french revolutionaries the jacobins they did not uh, recognize female equality as the part of uh, the equality universal equality and uh, they strongly struggled against uh, the female attempts to be recognized in in that notion and just to add to that a very interesting uh, the detail from uh, from the um, the time of the American Declaration in uh, from 1776 up to the 1920 1920 when the American uh, women got the right to vote that was the first how to say uh, dimension of the struggle for equality so uh, so it took uh, 144 years for the French women uh, from uh, the French Revolution up to the 1944, when they got the, uh, the equal right to vote, it took uh, 160 years. And for women in Europe, it took between 80 to 180 years, years to get the, right, the equal right to vote. The similar situation uh, happened also with the right to equal right to education first the primary education then secondary uh, and uh, only the right to uh, university education started uh, emerged as something legitimate for uh, the first university was the 
Zurich University, which uh, uh, allowed women to enter the higher education in uh, 1863, uh, Cambridge in uh, uh, 1870, uh, Oxford in 1878. So the issue of gender equality as a part of the legal history, even the modern history, that was my point, uh, has been a very actual one and many students will speak and many other uh, speakers will uh, talk about the pre-modern history and how the legal subjectivity of women uh, emerged in uh, how to in, in the logic of the pre-modern times as i mentioned the patri patriarchal ma matrix so i hope just to finish with that, that i hope that many of the students uh, who take part in this conference uh, personally or their friends and colleagues will join us at our future master study program when we uh, accredit that and when we start conducting that at our faculty and at uh, these other fac fac faculties who have uh, been mentioned as uh, the consortium partners in the project uh, law and gender master study program law and gender thanks a lot for giving me an opportunity and i congratulate to the students to uh, nina and to all the participants of the conference thank you Thank you, Please. Professor Boyadinovic. Before we give the word to our first keynote speaker for today, I would just like to give you a few more pieces of technical information. So I presume you all have the program. If not, you can access it both on the faculty's website on the Eustoria page and uh, on the Eustoria Facebook page. So as you see, we have disposed of the lunch break. We only have short breaks between sessions. I presume that's all right in the conditions of an online conference because everyone can just get up and get something to eat or even turn off their camera and eat in front of the computer without disrupting anyone else at the conference. And this way we get to have a more dynamic working schedule. Uh, if there are any questions uh, while someone is speaking, please ask them in the chat. You can either chat me privately or ask in front of everyone, whichever you prefer. And after the lecture and after every session, there will be discussions of about 30 minutes. So everyone will have uh, a chance to ask questions of the speakers directly. But in that case, too, if someone's microphone isn't working or for some other reason you can't speak out loud, you can also ask a question in the chat and the speaker will read it out and answer it. I would also like to uh, refer to a few uh, technical things regarding the conference itself. Uh, had this been a live conference, we would have issued pieces of paper as certificates of participant, participation to all participants. Uh, since it's online, we obviously can't do that, but uh, we can send you scans of the certificates. And if you need them in paper, you'll let us know by email later and send us an address so we can mail your certificates to you. As for publication of the papers, which Ardeen has also mentioned during the opening, uh, I am proud to say that we have a new student journal for legal history, the Herald of Legal History, Vesnik Pravni Studi in Serbian. The first issue should be coming out soon. Some of the students have participating here have already submitted their papers for this first issue. And of course, it is open to all other papers from this conference. So please send us your final versions of the papers for publication in the Herald. We will be very happy to publish it. The uh, journal is peer reviewed, so you might have to make some more modifications after you get the reviews, but that is all in the interest of the quality of your papers. Mm -hmm. 
finally uh, let this be the first occasion on which we will announce the subject for next year's Eustoria conference. And next year, the conference will be held around March 25th, regardless of the pandemic conditions. So if the pandemic persists, we will go to online mode directly. We won't postpone it. So the topic for next year is going to be law and religion. Again, all periods, all countries, there are, as you may imagine, many interesting subjects. And at last, I would like to thank the rest of the organizing committee of the Eustoria conference who have made this happen. Uh, there are Valentina Cvetkovic Djordjevic, who is an assistant professor of Roman law, uh, assistant professor Milos Stankovic and assistant Una Divac, who teach comparative legal traditions, and assistant professor Dalibol Djukic, who teaches ecclesiastical law. If I have not mentioned for myself, I teach Serbian legal history, so they have all been very helpful with their ideas and with their direct assistance in organizing this conference. It wouldn't have happened with, without them, so thank you all very much.